Welcome to the Whispering Podcast. Our goal is to change the volume on some of life's most difficult conversations. This podcast is brought to you by WISP, a hassle-free online service that brings sexual and reproductive health to you with no appointments necessary. Log on to hellowisp.com and in minutes you can request a same-day prescription, order birth control or emergency contraception delivery, and unlock the secret to better orgasms. Most prescriptions can be picked up at a local pharmacy or you can have meds shipped in discreet packaging directly to your home. Online consultations only take a few minutes and all medication is prescribed by U.S. licensed doctors in all 50 states. Dr. Purdy! Simone! Hi, Dolphin. Hi, Dollface. I haven't seen you in so long. I know, I miss you. I'm so glad we're back. I miss you too. I know, we're back. Back in action. I'm here for it. We are, what, at episode six? Yes, episode six. I'm excited. Like, today we get to interview you about a special thing that you're going to tell us a little bit about. But yeah. guys, welcome back to the Whispering Podcast. Again, this is episode six, and today we are going to be interviewing Dr. Purdy on the OMG cream. And I must say, it's one of my favorites. I don't have a lot of favorites, but that definitely is one of my favorite products. And you'll understand why in just a little bit. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Can I, can I say I'm feeling yeah. orgasmic? No. Yes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm excited. How this is going to be good. <laughs> I'm feeling really, really good. Um, yeah, I used it recently. And yeah, um, it's something about that peppermint. It's it's a game changer. So um kind of <laughs> kind of an intro into the topic guys it's of course the omg cream but it's more so that we're going to be talking about orgasms and we've noticed as the orgasm gap is super super real like one study has found that 20 percent of women say they don't orgasm while only two percent of men said the same and that is a big change in my mind um so you know with the omg cream you know it's it's honestly for anyone with a vagina, of course, and it's looking to increase pleasure with your sex life. And simply for those who are just having, you know, issues enjoying your sex life, this will definitely help kind of like amp it up. Um, Dr. Perry, do you want to kind of want to give your tidbit on that for a second? Yeah, well, so the, the thing about it is this, as we were talking about how to develop a product for people with clitorises, did you know that the clitoris is the only organ, the only one that's sole purpose is strictly for pleasure. You're lying. The only one. No, that's only that's about, the only one, really? Well, yeah. I mean, if you think about like the vagina, it it births babies, right? It it serves another purpose as well. Um, I mean, the urethra, the anus, they all even like nipples, they all serve the mouth, the hands, any organ that you might think of as being a sexual organ, even a penis, they have other functions too that they that they do, right? Urination or whatever. So the clitoris is the only organ that serves one purpose and it's one purpose is orgasm. And the thought of, right, right. And there are a couple, there are a couple of prescriptions out there that exist for women who have low libido. And that is a little different. Libido is the desire to have sex. It can be mental. It can be physical, mm. emotional, whether you, whether you want it, whether you feel it, that's different from arousal, which arousal is a part of the sexual response cycle where you're having engorgement, you're having lubrication, you're having desire to have sex. Arousal is different from libido, even though a lot of times people use those words interchangeably. So when we're thinking about how can we enhance people with clitoris' arousals, that's when we said, well, we need a topical medication so much safer than putting a pill in your mouth every day. Whenever you want to have sex, you can use it topically. It can be safe. And it has been incredibly successful as you might imagine. <laughs> yes. And I, and I, that's, that's wild. One, it's like, we now know that, that that's the clit's, you know, sole purpose, but yet people still avoid it, which I don't understand. Um, and you know, me personally, I'm someone that has a smaller one. So it's it's harder to get that experience. But with the OMG cream, it makes things a world of a difference. And I'm sure other people experience the same. Some women have larger, some are smaller like me. Um, so I'm glad that there's something that kind of just works for everybody. And I love it. I really do. 
Most um, people do. Now, I mean, it's super rare to hear a patient that says, oh, I hated that OMG. Cream. Right. I don't know. That and even if I don't have it, <laughs> I was going to say, does anybody even say that? And I mean, honestly, it's just a great e sensation, just even just applying it and not having intercourse. Like, it's just like a really good sensation. That's the only thing I can really say, um, you know, to put it in words. Um, I have yet to try it with using just like with just masturbating. Like, I feel like I might have a heart attack if I do that. But, you know, we'll, we'll try. I'll get back to you on that one. Baby steps. Baby steps. You know, we're just going to work our way into that. Um, but I understand like how you were saying, you know, prescription arousal, you know, it gets where, what's the word I'm looking for? Arousal gels, they work where, you know, over the counter um, orgasm creams can't. So, I, you know, I couldn't say it earlier. Is it sildenafil? Sil sildenafil. It's the same ingredient okay. that's in Viagra. Surprise. Okay, so it's a female version. <laughs> it's just a female version of it. So how would you say the OMG cream kind of differs from that outside of it, you know, being a topical thing? What would you say compare and contrast wise? Yeah, well, the, so so there's three different what you would call drugs or pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. inside of it, plus the peppermint, which gives you an initial response, right? So you feel the yeah. tingling, you feel the, the blood vessels dilating. And one of the things I, I wanted to make sure to say is that we di I didn't develop this in a vacuum. We had some pharmacists because there's a lot of chemistry that's involved. And so we work with pharmacists to say, look, I want to give the maximum clitoral arousal or engorgement possible. How can we do that? And so they recommended and we talked together and we came up with three different prescriptions that are in it, plus the peppermint in the nice kind of, it's almost like a it's like a petroleum gel kind of almost That's like that exactly thick, what it's like yep is kind of what mm -hmm. it's like it's not runny or gooey like a ky yep. or a lube might be it's also not really sticky it's a great substance and so we developed it together but what all of the pharmaceutical agents the drug the meds the drugs inside of it what they do is they cause the blood vessels to dilate, which is where engorgement comes from. And when you have okay. blood flow to the area, you have more sensation and then you have more arousal. And that's how it works. Even for people uh, with clitorises of all different sizes. Did you know that most people wait 26 days to see an OBGYN? If you're dealing with a vaginal infection, herpes outbreak or STI symptoms, you already know that's too long to wait. At HelloWisp.com, you can get a prescription in as little as three hours. Contact a doctor online and have the care you need delivered discreetly to your home for free in all 50 states or sent to your local pharmacy for pickup same day. Use code HEART, H-E-A-R-T, on your order for 15% off, only at HelloWisp.com. That's HelloWisp.com. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. So um, it that peppermint... It, and I was a little worried. <laughs> I was a little worried about it because I'm just like I know how peppermint is. Whether I'm drinking it, whether I'm using like a body wash that has it in there, and so people who are fearful of like you know a lot of concentrated like peppermint products, it's not what you think. Like it's very like cooling. It's a little tingle, and you're good to go. So thank you in advance for that. I really appreciate it. So let's go ahead. <laughs> So now that we got that out the way, let's go ahead and dive into the interview. So first things first, what gave you the idea to develop the OMG cream? <laughs> well, I've been working in the field of sexual health actually for a really, really long time. Even I was just thinking the other day when I was in college, I was a teaching assistant for the psychology of human sexuality class. So I've always found it a fascinating field and it is clearly a neglected realm of our modern healthcare system, right? It's the taboo stuff that you don't want to talk about. And, you know, it's, it's like, oh, people think that you're gross or you're dirty. And a lot of patients don't feel comfortable talking to their doctors about it. Right. But this is what everybody wants to talk about. So I worked for lots of companies that really focused on kind of the people with penises problems and the, you know, the Viagra's and the Cialis's or the PDE5 inhibitors, all the drugs for erections. And it kind of made me yeah. mad. I said, well, <laughs> what are we doing for the people with the clitorises? And actually I'll give you an anecdote. We didn't talk about this beforehand, but 
the year that we developed OMG cream, I got a phone call from an insurance company who will remain nameless. And they called me and they said, we're concerned about the number of medically non-necessary expensive drugs you've been ordering. And I said, oh, please tell me, what is that? And I had, right. I had written, this is a true story, um, 20, 20 RX for Addy, which is the, really? the only, as far as I know, FDA approved on label drug that treat, it's a pill, mm -hmm. pill for mm -hmm. hypoactive sexual desire disorder in women. And I said to that investigator who happened to be a woman, are you telling me right now that writing 20 prescriptions for the only drug for women's orgasms got me investigated? Because are you sure you want to go on record saying that? Do you? Right. Let's Do think you? about it first. And she was like, ah. And so after that, I thought, you know what? Nobody cares. Nobody is yeah. really prioritizing pleasure and, and people with clitoris's sexuality. Nobody cares. And so that's when we said, you know what, let we, because we're a team, right? Said, let's let's do this. Let's come up with a product. Let's give people something that's not going to get us investigated by the insurance companies or be too expensive. Because heaven forbid, it costs a lot of money mm -hmm. for women to have orgasms. And um, and so here we are a couple of years later, we have OMG cream. <laughs> I love how you get so fired up and you're fired up just leads to results. Like, I'm not. I'm like, really, are you it. sure that's what you want to say? Like, I want you to think about what you're asking oh, me right now. Because like, I definitely totally is not a lie. It's just for Viagra that year. <laughs> Nobody called me telling I was committing fraud. So. And it's so interesting that I don't even want to go. Okay, we're not going to go in that direction. I know. But Moving on. <laughs> that is a conversation for a different place at a different day. But I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> okay. So, um, I mean, how does, I can tell you how it works for me, but I guess, you know, people want to know, like, how, how does it actually work? Like, is it different from other topical stimulators that you're, you know, in your experience? Yeah. So the over-the-counter stuff, because there's a lot of things that are available over-the-counter. And what they do, it's actually, I like to compare the over-the-counter stuff to like lip plumping agents where you put them on, they feel a little tingly, and then your lips look bigger. That's actually what those products are doing is they're dilating the blood vessels in your lips and they're causing engorgement of your lips is what it is. But they're using like cinnamon or peppermint or whatever. So the topical drugs, they do that. They're, I can't even say drugs. The topical products that are available over the counter, that's what they include is materials that just act real quick, um, dilate the blood vessels, clitoris gets engorged. But then once the product is is gone or wiped off, there's no residual effect. So the difference is this is a prescription, which means it takes a little bit of time to kick in. So you have your initial mm -hmm. response, which is what the peppermint's for. And then you have your delayed mm -hmm. response, which is why we should wait those 30 minutes, which we'll talk you about know, that. Follow the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but they work like pharmaceuticals. So they dilate mm -hmm. the blood vessels and technically it lasts for several hours, but it takes a little time to absorb. It takes a little time to do its job and it takes a little bit of time to wear off. So the nice thing is if you're having sex a few hours later, it's possible you could actually still reap the benefits yeah. of that. Which is awesome. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Now we've, we said it's for anybody with, you know, a clit, but who is the OMG cream for? Like, can it be used if you have herpes, a yeast infection, um, if you're breastfeeding or pregnant? Like, are there, yes, we say it's for everyone with the clit, but is it for everybody who has these certain type of conditions? Yeah. So I would always say that if you have some sort of a chronic medical condition, especially things like, I mean, and I think this is unlikely, but if you have heart attacks and strokes and, you know, cardiac stuff and if you have a specialist that you are seeing for something that needs to be managed, always get their clearance first, even though mm -hmm. it's topical and the amount that ends up in your bloodstream is probably minuscule to none. It's the right thing to do for us to say, please get your specialist to sign off on it first. It is definitely safe for people with herpes, yeast infection, all of that, of course, you may not be comfortable having sex it, if you have an active yeast infection or an active herpes outbreak. We excluded, so there is a particular substance called L-arginine that you can put in these types of creams because there's others on the market, but that can actually cause herpes outbreaks. So we chose to take it out really? and just leave it. Okay. Yeah, it's another vasodilator, makes the blood mm -hmm. vessels again, but we chose to leave it out 
so that it, it's not a problem because we have a lot of our patients do have herpes. That was the original condition that WISP was founded to treat. And now pregnant or breastfeeding, you know, technically these are medications. If you were to take them orally, we would say don't use if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. But again, topically, the likelihood that it's going to absorb into your bloodstream and cause harm to the fetus or your breast milk is very, 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 very low. But please check with your OB as well. Um, I think at, at WISP, we probably just go ahead and don't treat those people out of an overwhelming abundance of caution, but have that conversation with your OB. And if your OB says, no, this is fine for you to use. And I support orgasms in pregnancy, go get some. <laughs> Send us a doctor's note. And I feel like we could work with you on that. Let's be honest, preventing pregnancy is a pain. Whether you're picking birth control up every month or running to grab plan B, it costs too much time, money, and effort. All while your partner gets to go about their day uninterrupted. WESP is changing the game. At HelloWESP.com, you can get the reproductive care you need without stepping foot in a doctor's office or waiting in line. Have birth control delivered on your schedule and get emergency contraceptive before you need it. Use code CARE, C-A-R-E, at HelloWESP.com for 15% off your first order. That's HelloWISP.com and have it delivered for free. Okay, awesome. And I love how intentionally you guys were to keep that specific, um, what did you call it? It's called L... Arginine. Mm -hmm. Yes, L-arginine, um, to keeping that out and just, you know, taking those specific pet clients in, in mind when making the product because, you know, you don't want anything that's going to amplify something that they're already dealing with chronically. Um, so that's awesome. Now, when it, so when it comes to, like, the research, um, supporting topicals like sildenafil, why isn't there enough evidence on that? Um, do you have any thoughts at all? You know what, Simone? Why isn't there enough? <laughs> Let's loudly ask the question out into the universe about why there isn't enough research, people. Because there's plenty of research about erectile dysfunction. So where's the mm -hmm. research? But in all seriousness, although that is very serious. <laughs> I'm very serious. That is not a joke. I know, I know you're um, so serious. I know. Don't mind me laughing. It was you're like, you know what, Simone? And I was like, okay, yep. Well, there have been a few studies that have been done, small studies that have been done looking at clitoral blood flow with some of these topical medications. It's not enough big, large scale, randomized, double blinded, controlled studies for there to be research publications out there that say all women who can't orgasm put this on your clitoris and that's what we recommend. But the research that mm -hmm. does exist does show increased blood flow to the clitoris. It shows increase in orgasm, and it really mm -hmm. suggests that there is a need for more research. So maybe we can get yeah. our scientific community to start taking orgasms in women seriously and do a little bit more research. And there just really needs to be like a deep dive study on why nobody cares. Like, no, just yeah. nobody cares. We have a paternalistic society, and we're working our way out of that. Down with the patriarchy. Okay, um, moving on. <laughs> so I know <laughs> we're gonna we're not allowed to the podcast anymore. We're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> I know. I was like, did I say that? No. Now I know we talked I, about I, waiting I just to like. I know. I'm like, we could really go there. We could really go there. Um, now waiting the thirty minutes. Do you really have to, or you know, is it you an option? You really like want to. Okay. You want to, I know it's mm -hmm. tempting. I know, <laughs> I know it's tempting. Like, here's mm -hmm. the thing, Simone, like get creative, right? Let's say you're on a yeah. date and you're headed home mm -hmm. and like, you know, what's going to happen. Just like put some on before you leave the restaurant. You know what I mean? But, it, but if you, I feel like what to get the full experience and to really see what those three medications do for you, especially if you're someone who is anorgasmic and you are not having orgasms, mm -hmm. Give it the 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes. There was, yeah, I definitely waited like three hours and my head tilted and I was like, oh, dear God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I get it now. This is why you follow instructions. Because there's sometimes, you know, when they're like, take this with food and you're like, I, I can take this without food. I was like, okay, I'm going to wait 30 minutes. Waited three you hours. Want and it, to wait 30 minutes. <laughs> yep. You do. You just wait as long as possible if you can. Um, now, when it comes to oral sex, um, I know like it has the peppermint and the other things on there. Can it be used before or after um, oral sex at all? 
Yeah. So technically, I think we say no. And the reason why mm -hmm. is this, because... Yes, it is Viagra, pentoxifiline, and one other, like ergotamine or something. And technically, we don't have the ability to do a medical screening on your partner to make sure that it's safe for them, right, across the mm -hmm. board. So I believe it comes with a warning that says, you know, not intended for use. That being said, again, the likelihood that something bad would happen is very, 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 very unlikely. And you can always have your partner check in with your doc, their doctor first to say, you know, hey, how do you feel? But there, there is a warning against that. I've never heard of any, but I know we have patients that use it before, during and after oral sex. And I've never heard of a bad outcome from one of our patients. I've never heard a horror story but because of the fact that it is a prescription and we can't evaluate the person on the other side of it to know that it's yep. safe for them, that's why we have mm -hmm. to have that warning. Okay, no, that, that makes perfect sense. And I mean, granted, vaginas have been around for the beginning of time. Why are we just now hearing about this? Like, Isn't where have you been all my question? life? <laughs> Isn't that a great question, Simone? That's a wonderful question. I believe that we have the honor of living in our society at this day and time to where a portion of our society is actually willing to consider orgasms in people with vaginas as a part of wellness, as a normal bodily function that everyone has the right to experience. And I think we're, we're starting to have those conversations. And so I think that when the generations of women who, or we could say people with clitorises is more accurate, coming up behind us into the future, I think that this will be something that is more talked about and advocated for, and there will be so much less silencing of the clitoris here forward. Please. I'm, I'm just, I'm praying. I'm, I'm bringing in all of the good vibes for this because it's so necessary. It really is. It's a um, it has a body function. And I don't know why we know? demonized it. I we just, know. you know, just go around it. Don't talk about it. Don't look at it. And it's just like, it just needs some love and attention. That's all. You know, it's very simple. Now, this next part is my favorite part is fact or fiction. Rapid fire. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. We're going to do five. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. You need to orgasm to have pleasurable sex. False. Boom. Vulvas can only orgasm through penetrative, penetrative sex. Very false. We have to come back to that because I have a question. All right. Fake it till you make it is the best way to figure out what you want. False. No. <laughs> Who wants to fake it? Come on now. False. I'm not orgasming. It's my partner's fault, right? False. You false. have the responsibility for your own orgasms. Keep going. You do. I'm not orgasming. Something is wrong with me. False. 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 Back, False. back False. to my other one. What is, okay, I know I'm going to sound funny saying this, but the G spot, like, what is the difference between that and your clit? Like, Let's ask I, need, I need to understand. Okay. <laughs> so, understand. inside of your vagina, there mm -hmm. is an area of tissue that feels a little different than the rest of the tissue around it. It's usually on the anterior or the or the front side of your vagina. So closer to your mm -hmm. belly button, right? And as okay. opposed to the back, which is closer to your rectum. And mm -hmm. it has a concentration of blood vessels, nerve endings, and it is a pleasure center. It's a pleasure center. And it can be stimulated through a lot of different ways. That's why a lot of um, female, like what you could say, like vaginal, um, pleasure devices. I don't want to say toys, but mm -hmm. pleasure devices toys, yeah. will yeah. have kind of the internal part. That's what that's for is a G-spot stimulator. And the external okay. is the clitoris stimulator. So it's almost like an accessory clitoris, but it can be very pleasurable. And if you can learn how to target it with your sexual actions, you can have G-spot orgasms too. It's a different experience. A lot of people describe it as more of a whole body sort of a sensation. Um, See, why you have to tell me that? <laughs> that's what I'm here for. Simone, Listen, I'm here for you. At, at this point, I'm like, 
I'm really contemplating life right now because I've never experienced that before. And I mean, granted, I didn't, I didn't have my first orgasm until maybe I was like 25. Um, and it was kind of on accident too, on top of that. I know. Yeah, I know. I was like, and I literally, when it you happened, I was like, sharing. oh. I've never heard about <laughs> accidental orgasms and I have more questions about that. Okay. I mean, it, it was accidental because, you know, he, he was a little, he was a little heavy set, you know, and his body was rubbing against my clit. And when I had it, I was like, oh, this is what that thing that everybody talks about. Uh -huh. That's when it happened. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Cause I, I, I never, prior to that, I'd never had one before. And I, didn't also make it a priority too because in my mind I'm like I can't have one I just I always told myself I couldn't so it never became like a priority thing that's and what they yeah, do I was like oh no I can do you know the medical term for someone who experiences herpes, cold sores, chronic UTIs, yeast infections, or BV? It's called being a human. At HelloWisp.com, you can get the sexual health care you need same day without stepping foot in a doctor's office. Privately message a doctor online and get same day prescriptions for BV, yeast, UTIs, STIs, herpes, cold sores, birth control, and emergency contraceptive. Delivered discreetly to your home for free in all 50 states. Or sent directly to your local pharmacy within three hours. Take 15% off your first order with code HEART. H-E-A-R-T. Only at HelloWisp.com. That's HelloWisp.com. Imagine if people who have a full digestive system say, I've never eaten before, so I just assume I can't eat. I you, can't eat. And it's like, can't eat. you can. It's okay. And now that I'm, you know, ever since then, I'm like, you can have orgasms. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this, this is not happening without that. Like, no. <laughs> it's, it's too you much fun I'm, to not. Yeah. It's, a it's a bodily function. I feel like it's everybody deserves it. it. I actually and, was and at you a. You deserve concert. it. It's there. Um, I was at a conference last week and I was speaking with a company that makes um, vi vibrators. And one of the people from the company was like, I can tell by standing here and looking around what people are not having orgasms. <laughs> I said, you know what? You're probably right about that. Were people like making faces at all? Like She just, she just said that they seem, their energy is just really grumpy and like, you know, <laughs> someone, they're really uptight. Yeah, they're upset about tight. Things. Yeah. I'm telling you, you loosen up, you come very much of a free spirit once you experience it. So you, you're like, I'm down for the cause at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so we got some like little tidbits about celebrities. And of course, you know, we think they're just so superhuman. And it's like, how could you not experience these type of things with your lifestyle? But they are human too. Um, and so I wanted to kind of get a, some reaction. So Eva Longoria said, I didn't begin enjoying sex until, until I started masturbating, she told Self Magazine. Before that, I really wasn't sexual. I bought my first vibrator three years ago. It's a shame I didn't discover it sooner. Now I give rabbit vibrators to all of my girlfriends. They scream when they unwrap it. The best gift I, I can give them is an orgasm. Damn, that's, wow. And it was the fact that she said she didn't discover, she's like a shame she didn't discover it sooner because I'm not sure how old she is. Um, yeah. She might be in like her late forties, um, yeah. but it's, it's sad. that she didn't enjoy it until she started masturbating. So I'm like, are all women just having sex to have sex and not to like actually enjoy the experience? It just makes me sad. It makes okay. me sad. Okay, so she's 48, too. yeah. She's 48, okay. It, I mean, it makes mm -hmm. me sad too because you think about the the law the pleasure right like the lack of pleasure the purpose is for pleasure sometimes you get a baby out of it i guess but generally you know clitorises don't actually make babies they don't carry babies they don't birth babies they don't deliver babies they don't feed babies they don't sustain babies clitorises nothing babies all they do is produce pleasure and that's the function of it and so to imagine that someone may have that part of their body and their wellness neglected for so long and not even on purpose. Not like she said, I don't like that or I'm not into that. She just didn't know. It makes me sad. She didn't know. And it, literally she said, it's a shame. I didn't discover it sooner. So it's like, now you're reflecting back on all the times that you've, you know, you've had sex and it just, it wasn't, you weren't enjoying it. Oh my goodness. Um, and then Rachel Bilson, she said she had her first orgasm from sex at age 38. Okay, so I'm assuming she's had it before oh, through, you know, stimulation. 
Um, but just from sex alone. So would that be she experienced the G spot situation here or hard to say? I mean, you experienced an orgasm during sex, right? Because with mm -hmm. the friction, so hard to say. Yeah. I mean, there are so many ways. That's why I mean, mm -hmm. OMG cream is a great option for that. If you're doing right. something like penetrative sex and you get a little stimulation, but not a ton of stimulation. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a great use for it. So hard to say, but yeah. it could have been a G spot orgasm for sure. Awesome. And then Emma Thompson said, does anyone know or care if middle-aged women are getting any sexual satisfaction? That is a very good question. Um, cause I would, I, I, no, I don't know if I was on Twitter or Instagram, but these guys who had a podcast, of course, they need to get rid of the mics, but they were saying how that younger women will do whatever they can to, when it comes to giving oral sex, they will research different ways to do it. Whereas they say middle-aged women are more lazy. And I'm just like, how uh -huh. could you possibly com compare the two or even say that? Yeah. I personally don't think that's true. Um, but based on her, you know, her question. Did you yeah, call in and say, are you researching all the techniques on oral sex? No, I'm good. I just reported no. them for spam. So that's what I did. <laughs> it's just good like for you. Yeah. Just, no, it, it just makes me sad very much that they think age has anything to do with someone's desire. Like, no, it, if, they're not wanting to do this. They're not wanting to do it. it has nothing to do with it being a younger versus middle aged, um, you know, situation. And I don't know why sex appeal or attraction is taken away from middle aged women. Like at a certain point, men look at a woman like, oh, she's in her thirties. Like, oh, she's less attractive. Even though she could be completely beautiful, it's something about the age. I don't know if it makes them feel inferior in a way, or they lose some form. I don't know. It's a whole thing. But, That's another um, podcast for another podcast, I feel like. Yeah, literally for another podcast. So it's just sad, but um, I think she is doing like some form of, um, I don't know if it's like a documentary or a movie about her question, but I wonder what struck it because she is a mom now. And um, I wonder what brought that on. Because I don't think she's, Emma, she, I think she's like my age. So she might be like in her early 30s. Yeah. So I wonder what that brought that about. But- sure. Yeah. So you have any other thoughts or anything that you want to, you would love to so share with the thoughts. people? We would never end our <laughs> podcast if we talked about all of my thoughts, but I do think that I'm so grateful for you letting me come back and talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is closing yes. the orgasm gap, which is long mm -hmm. overdue to be closed. And I guess this is what I would say. If you're listening to this and you are one of those people who says, I have a clitoris, I have a vagina, and I've never had an orgasm, and I'm struggling to have an orgasm. Um, of course, you know, you want to see your gynecologist and make sure everything is okay, but come and talk to us. Um, try the OMG cream. We actually have a little discount code for people. If you hear this, I think it's um, whispering 15, you get 15% yes, off on your mm -hmm. prescription, of course. And you have to be you know, you have to go through the screening forms and everything to make sure you qualify, but the overwhelming- It's not just the click. <laughs> the, the overwhelming majority of people qualify. Let me just put that out there. But if, but no longer do any of us have to suffer in silence as it pertains to anything regarding our sexual health and well-being. So if you need help, ask for it. If you need to reach out, do it. We're here for you. We support you. We love you. And we wish very, you a lifetime of yes. happy orgasms. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you again so much for joining us and for this wonderful episode with Dr. Purdy. I just love my girl. And of course, guys, if you have any patient stories or just anything that you want to share with us, you know, you can always reach out to us um, anonymously or if not, you can always share your information with us if you want. You can give us a call at 415-520-8215. And you can also reach out to our wonderful Peyton at Peyton, P-A-Y-T-O-N at HelloWisp.com com for any written submissions that you want to send in um and again whispering 15 just like dr purdy said if you're listening in to get that 15 percent off it will do you wonders but until next time dr purdy thank you again and we will see you guys soon bye guys <laughs>